नमस्ते ऑल गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम टू द मॉर्निंग सेशन सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट यू एच वी थ्री अंडरस्टैंडिंग नेचर एंड एग्जिस्टेंस कॉम्प्रिहेंसिवली एंड इन दैट वी वर ऑन लेक्चर फोर yesterday we briefly took a look at or talked a little bit about the existence that the existence is in the form of coexistence and it is ever present it was there it is there and it continues to be there and if we look at this existence this coexistence is of units that are submerged in space the two are being talked of separately because these are two separate realities the units are a different reality the space is a different reality in the units you find that the units are limited in size but if you look at space space has no boundary it is unlimited then if you look at the units you find units have activity but if you look at space what you say shunya in hindi or kriya shunyata no activity then if you look at the units these are also of two distinct types so you have the material units and you have the consciousness units material units are temporary they you can see that they are formed and then they are deformed so this is a cyclic kind of a process formation happens then deformation happens and an example of the material is the body of course there are many things outside you can see but for our purposes what is most significant right now it is we can start with the body if we understand the body we can also understand other material units so the body we can see that it is a temporary unit there is birth then the body grows it grows in height it grows you know that there are more and more cells being formed in the body and the size of the cells also keeps increasing up to a point and these processes of formation and deformation are going on in the body at the same time as the body gets older earlier the formation is more deformation is less so there is growth in the body later formation is less deformation is more and eventually as the body gets old there is death of the body and death is just that the body the contents of the body they deteriorate and then we either burn the body we bury the body but it goes back to the elements of the nature so this is a cyclic process if you look at the consciousness unit the consciousness unit the self it is continuous so we are not talking of a birth and death of the self the self is continuous in time but it is still limited in size as opposed to the self 
So now you can see that there are three realities. If you look at the different characteristics, you find that there are three realities. The material reality, for example, the body, the consciousness reality, that is the self, and the space. And how they are interacting, how they are interconnected, for that, we have to understand each reality. And that is what we are trying to do in this process. So the body is limited in size and it is temporary in time. The consciousness is limited in size but continuous in time. And if you look at the space, the space is unlimited, unlimited in time, unlimited in size, no boundaries at all, unbounded in time and space. We also talked about the responses that are there in the material and the consciousness units. So in the material unit, we said that there is recognizing and fulfilling. That there is already, we don't have to create this, we don't have to do this. It is already there that there is, you know, in all the material units, the units recognize their relationship with each other and fulfill their relationship in a very definite manner. So you give it some food, it is assimilated in a certain way, digested, and that whole process is happening in a very specific manner. If you look at the consciousness, if you look at the self, you find that this recognition and fulfillment is of course there, but it is not definite. And why it is not definite is because it is either on the basis of assuming without understanding or you can say assume or assuming or you can say accepting with understanding and that makes all the difference. So if I assume I don't have a relationship with somebody else then my recognition and fulfillment is in accordance with that assumption. But if I can see my relationship with the other, now my recognition and fulfillment is different. So, this recognition and fulfillment fluctuates. So you'll find that the human being is the only one in this existence that has this fluctuation. And this, that too, in the human being, it is the self, where this indefiniteness is there. The body is definite. But when it comes to the self, self directs the body a certain way based on assumptions, and until and uh, unless those assumptions, those acceptances are based on knowing, they may keep changing. And so the behavior, the recognition, fulfillment also changes. And therefore you see that the human beings have indefinite conduct. But once we get to knowing, once we are able to see things exactly the way they are, then our previous assumptions, some of them may have been right, they stay with us. Those that were not in line, they get dropped. And with that, our recognition and fulfillment becomes definite.
then there is possibility of definiteness in human conduct just as there is in the material so this much we had talked about yesterday and to reflect on in the assignment we had spoken of reflecting on how much time and effort we spend and have been spending on what is temporary and how much time and effort we spend on that which is continuous so we accumulate wealth we focus on what skills to get we focus on you know academically learning more in the, whatever is there in the b2 block after the death of the body whatever was there in the b2 block that will have to be redone start from the beginning that's why each time we have to go through learning abc's learning the language all of that whatever is there in the b1 block however much we make effort and are able to see in the b1 block there there is possibility of continuity so if we are making effort for right understanding we are making effort for continuity if we are just you know going on in the b2 block without any guidance from the b1 block that means we are just recycling whatever we hear whatever we see from outside and we keep replaying that isn't it we don't pick up anything new from within it is just whatever we hear from outside whatever we see whatever somebody says whatever somebody is doing our experience based on what somebody's behavior is like and so on and then we keep replaying that within us that's what it is about the b2 block so that is cyclic that will not last but whatever effort we make in the b1 block for understanding there there is possibility of continuity so we have many sanskars these sanskars continue with us the body dies the sanskars in the self continue and with these sanskars you know in the next journey we start with those sanskars so ultimately are we spending time on correcting our sanskars bringing them in line with understanding bringing them in line with the natural acceptance or are we spending time mostly on the temporary for now we can just think of we can talk about the self later we will discuss all that later for now if we just limit to you know body and self we can see where we are making that effort so we can take your reflections about this good morning didi good morning everyone uh, didi i have a question uh, you said that consciousness units uh, are also limited in size Mm -hmm. that means self is limited in size that one i could not understand like how in size it is limited there is some limit to the size it's not like just as the body has a limit you can see that because you can see with the gross eye hmm self is more subtle so we are not able to see it hmm it has a limit to its size it's not an unlimited boundless thing but it is not limited in time yes. it is continuous in time meaning hmm. 
not that it is going to die down and be finished. It is there. It was there before. It is there. It will be there. I mean, right now we may not be able to um, validate this. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. We can keep it as an open proposal till we are able yes. to explore it more and be able to see it for ourselves. Yes. But because we are talking about this now, so we brought it up. But not necessary that we will be able to see everything that is being talked of. Hmm. And whatever we are not able to see for ourselves, we should keep it as an open proposal. Don't believe it, but don't disbelieve it also. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, then how long it would continue? Like, what do we can see decomposing is there, uh, but uh, self then how long it would continue like that way? Is there any uh, that, uh, can you highlight on that? Yeah, see, there is a that? difference between limited in size uh -huh. and time. We are not saying it uh -huh. is limited in time. Uh -huh. Isn't it? We are uh -huh. saying it is continuous in time. Uh -huh. That means it was there, it is there, it will be there. In time, it is continuous. Mm. But so we cannot uh, means have any idea about like that. How long it would continue this way, even <laughs> the self? <laughs> if it is continuous in time, that means it will continue, no? Uh, okay, that listening and learning, right? Uh, the existence equal to coexistence means actually uh, the. If coexistence is there, there is a uh, existence. Otherwise, there is no existence, I think. Then, existence uh, is there, right? Uh, we can see that existence is there. Uh, correct. What is uh, being said by understand. equal to coexistence just means uh, that it is in the form of coexistence. This is yeah. how it is. Uh, 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 that, so the existence is in the form of this coexistence of units Submerged ah. You cannot ah. separate this out. Separate. We cannot separate. Correct. correct. Ah. So this is mm -hmm. how it is. Ah. If coexistence is there, existence is there. Otherwise, not. No, ah. no, 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 no. But, hmm. What do you mean by coexistence is there, then existence is there? Existence I mean, like, say, is in the form of coexistence. Ah. Isn't it? Ah. It is just there. It is there. Ah. It is there. And it. if we try to look into it, hmm. we find that it is in the form of coexistence. Coexistence. Means we have to understand actually uh, the coexistence part we are understanding actually day by day, day by day. We are uh, realizing that it is there, yeah. but our part is to understand. Like that, so they, yes. we say yes. from that uh, animal consciousness to human consciousness, more and more we are having the consciousness uh, towards that so we can understand more and more. Yes. So mm -hmm. as we go deeper into the subject, as mm -hmm. we explore more, Correct. we will see more and more this, what we are talking about, this coexistence, ah. how everything is interconnected. Mm -hmm. The very foundation for that is this mm -hmm. space that is interconnecting everything. That is the Correct. coexistence. Yeah, that actually the distinction between testing and comparing. Testing is okay that you told that it is static. Once I have uh, had a test for a sweet particular, that you are searching that type of sweet, etc. That we un understand. The comparing also come under the uh, static uh, activity. On the basis ah. of comparison, mm -hmm. basis of that, uh, you know, on which I am comparing. Analyzing. Mm. On that, I analyze. And analyze. I decide, isn't it? So if I, my basis for comparison is, say, the expense. Mm. Something that I am doing and I want to, um, whatever, we had taken the example of build a house or you know, buy mm. a house, whatever may be the thing. Mm. Now, if my basis for comparison is mm. the expense, mm -hmm. Then I will analyze, you know, how much funds I have, 
where I can get them, right? So mm -hmm. I already have that basis. So on that basis of, you know, that the basis for which or on which I'm comparing, on that mm -hmm. basis, I analyze and I come to some decision about it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, Didi, I, I am getting actually co confused then the testing and comparing because in testing also once I have tested something so I have make it a base or yet stick within the uh, I was so searching this that. Is, no, this is why when the question came about static and dynamic activity, this hmm. is why we were taking these examples to explain. And you huh. will also see that in the hmm. case of the imaging, the desire. Hmm. Hmm. We didn't talk of it that time, but since the question has come up. Hmm. Now, when we don't have access to the higher activities, when we are not taking guidance from the higher activities, huh. now there is no, you know, that state activity is missing Achha. when it comes to the imaging part. Yeah. So in this hmm. slide, you can see, now in the case of imaging, imaging that state activity part is dormant. We are not able to access it to begin mm. with, mm. isn't it? So here there is no basis for us. Within Achy. us, there is nothing, yes. isn't it? Therefore, mm. our imaging is affected by the outside mm. because this is missing in us. Mm. Missing in the sense we have not awakened to it. Right. Can you see? Mm -hmm. So there in the state activity, right, you know, in the beginning, when we are not yet exploring, when we are not looking, we have been looking outside, our mm -hmm. desires are coming from outside, from preconditioning, mm -hmm. from sensation, because there is no basis for us mm -hmm. within. As we awaken to the activity of contemplation, mm -hmm. now there is a base. Within us, we have, we can see the relationship. Mm -hmm. Now that becomes the base for my desire, for my imaging, for my mm -hmm. feeling. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. that is so while the feeling earlier was affected by the outside, mm -hmm. whatever is happening outside is influencing my feeling. That's because inside... I'm not getting anything from there. But as I keep exploring, as I keep referring to the natural acceptance, slowly mm. I become aware of this activity of contemplation. Mm. Once I become aware of this activity of contemplation, mm. and I'm able to see the relationship with the other, now the whole picture changes. Mm. Now that, that is what is there within me. And on the basis of that, I set my feeling. Hmm. you see like that so that's how it goes that's how we were trying to give examples for state activity and dynamic activity hmm. yeah hmm. The, this is the important work that we have to do we have to hmm. finally unfold all these higher activities to. within us hmm. so that there from there we take guidance that becomes the basis and on that basis, we take decisions. We, you know, have the dynamic activity. Mm -hmm. The words are not important, state and dynamic. Mm -hmm. What is important is to see that when the higher activities have not opened up for us or we have not awakened to them, we are taking mm -hmm. all this input from outside. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? And we think we are deciding, but it's really coming from outside. Mm. It's only when we awaken to the higher activities that we realize mm. slowly, bit by bit, we are able to see the relationship, we are able to understand the harmony, we are able to see the coexistence, then it all becomes very clear. And that mm. becomes the basis for my, you know, whatever decisions I take, whatever I determined to do whatever further I do everything this becomes the basis mm. and then it 
naturally comes down to my feeling is based on this therefore my thoughts are based on this therefore my behavior also becomes mm. that way and that is definite that mm. is not changing because in the existence this is how it is there is relationship there is harmony there is coexistence mm. and even though these higher activities are not opened up in a, in us till a glimpse of that is available to us in the form of the natural acceptance hmm correct this is of the natural acceptance we can see if we ask ourselves we can see that we have a natural acceptance for relationship yes. for harmony yes. for coexistence that's because that glimpse is there but we hmm. have to unfold it fully only when we refer to the natural acceptance we are able to have that feeling otherwise mm. we slip back to our assumptions our sanskars isn't it correct so we have to open up these higher activities ultimately only that can lead to the definiteness in conduct mm. yeah didi yes but didi like here see testing and selecting so similarly see in the uh, b1 part realization and authentication uh, is there any relation that way uh, like here uh, as we have a particular test so you do select the particular suites like similarly here realization and authentication oh, as we have yeah. realized then yeah see huh. we started with contemplation so when you contemplate huh. and you see the relationship hmm. now your imaging your desire your feeling is on the basis of that relationship mm. that you saw that you mm. are able to see within you mm. right mm. similarly when you understand the harmony in nature mm. now your determination is in accordance with that determination right, right. you will try to make sure that you know all your lower activities are now coming in line with this mm hmm mm. and you will have that determination that you want to see ultimately you know the entire existence mm. and ultimately with that realization realization means when you actually directly see the coexistence the way it is not just as information not just as words ha ha correct just as you know uh, something that we are able to talk about but mm. beyond that to be actually experience it within us to be able to see it within correct with that the authentication becomes the basis now for all your actions for all your you know everything that you decide that you think and it will reflect in your behavior correct. and it will be definite because now it hmm. is fixed now you know this is how it is hmm. so on that basis on the basis of knowing now it is ultimately authenticated in all your lower activities hmm. and it reflects in your behavior correct ha huh? didi correct thank you didi thank you uh, namaste madam uh ma'am yes the assignment like how much time you spend on body and this self so i was doing this exercise i was able to see uh that uh, much time was spent on the body material than the self one i think uh, to spend more time on the self i uh, need to get free from some work a stable mind settle thing but then when we are doing our daily chores uh it becomes thoda difficult to continue concentrating um uh, much on this self so it becomes on and off like yeah. uh, ha huh. couple of year, uh, one year before i met with uh, surgery is couple of surgery is related to tumor and it has formed third time also so i used to become restless or unhappy when 
why this is happening with my body but for the moment because in that hospital also i tried to focus on this self exploration the moment i feel no body is different it's temporary self is continuous so nothing is uh, happening in the self that moment only we feel a uh, feeling of fearlessness and yes. some happiness and i was feeling ki ye moment should be continued the feeling of happiness and the same thing when we see with other other body and self is also different so when others go away uh, like a few days before i talked about my uh, mother she is not so that time also if i am able to see this correctly then i should not feel unhappy or fear so True. want and for the practice should be this should be constant remembrance constant work effort on this then we will be able to do this that's what i want to say i'm, I'm done yeah so when we say constantly remember right now it is like that because we are so tuned to the body even though we have this information that you know i am the self i am continuous the body is a temporary unit it will die even though i have all this information i haven't seen it myself it's only there in my thoughts it is there as information therefore i have to keep trying to recall that and i keep forgetting so called forgetting actually it's because i haven't been able to directly see it so whatever is there as information i have to keep making effort to recall at especially at moments when you know i am not aware and it slips again again i go back to my old sanskar of i am body can you see so that drives my feeling so if i am if i haven't been able to see this eventuality that i am the self i am continuous the body is the one that is dying or is you know not there anymore that it is temporary now i if i am i can see it then there is no question of remembering or trying to recall because i have directly seen it it is there i already have that within me can you see that mm-hmm. so okay. to reach that state to begin with we have to make lot of effort when we come to the exercises have you done the exercises before yes ma'am yes i have done it exercise 1 and 2 yes yes i have done it okay so in the exercises also what we say in the beginning is take time out spend at least half an hour by yourself or close your eyes at a time when you are not likely to be disturbed by anything outside at a time when you are not rushing anywhere you know so you take that time you sit by yourself close your eyes and then start looking inward this is what we say so why is that because in the beginning when you are busy doing other things you get distracted because you are looking outward you are seeing things outward and that is distracting you and you are not able to pay attention inward so to begin with you need to sit down you need to close your eyes and you need to look inside it doesn't mean that when you close the eyes everything about the outside shuts off you will still have many thoughts but you just keep observing the thoughts don't get into the thoughts don't get into you know involving with the thoughts but you just observe and then slowly once you know you develop some amount of competence you will find you can do this with eyes open also you will find you can do this while you are doing all the activities also and now it is no longer a, like a strain it's no longer that it is either this or that it's no longer that i have to pay attention outside therefore i can't pay attention inside it becomes both you are able to do both that potential is there in all of us we just have to you know spend some take some make some effort spend some time and develop that competence 
So when we do the exercises, we'll talk more about that. Yeah. Yes, Madam Ji. So ultimately, I take effort on distinguishing this, understanding this, then slowly, I need not take explicit effort on spending more time on uh, self and less time on body. It will become automatic. No, it will become automatic because I will see what is significant for me. Then I will spend that much. See, today what is happening many a time, I'm not saying for you or anybody in particular, but a lot of times what happens is people say, let's do this, let's do that for time pass. So what is that time pass? So if you have, you know, free time, you might want to turn inward and look into the self in that time. Because that's where if you, you know, keep exploring within, if you keep spending time inside, being able to see things more and more clearly inside, that's how you're going to unfold these activities. From outside, you cannot unfold these activities within you. If somebody is referring to that, that is also information. That's just going to add to more words. It increases your vocabulary perhaps, but it doesn't help you in any way to understand things better. Isn't it? So we can go into a lot of depth about the details of the self and all. But really, what does it matter? It will just add to more information within us. Until and unless we directly see it for ourselves, it is of no use to us because it will not come in our living until we have seen it. That's why we keep saying, nobody can, you cannot make somebody understand. You can help in the process. You can make the effort. You can give some pointers. But ultimately, the reality has to be seen by each one of us within us. There is no other way. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. So, this is what we talked of about the existence so far. Now, in this, you can see that the same thing in a little more detail has been put in this chart. So here you can see existence is in the form of coexistence with units being submerged in space. And if you look at the units, the units you will find they have particular characteristics. We already spoke of a couple. Units are limited in size. They are active. There is activity in these units. Some or the other activity is there in these units. You also find that each of these units is self-organized. Things are happening in a particular manner. And that is so, in a particular organized manner. So if you look at the body, you know, in the body, there are so many systems. You have circulatory system, you have um, respiratory system, you have digestive system, you have nervous system. So many systems are there in the body. And if you look at all the way down to the cells, you have trillions of cells in the body. Now, all of these are working together. All of these are working together and they are working for the larger good of the body as a whole. How is it happening? That's just how it is. It's all very organized. It's all happening in a very definite manner. So all these cells are working together independently also. They are just doing their you know, their job. And all the systems also are working together in harmony. Isn't it? They are all doing this as part of their own self-organization. We are not having to coordinate and orchestrate all these systems. It's not that I have to, 
you know, each time give direction, now the heart, you must keep beating. We don't have to do all that. It's already organized and it's happening. So you'll find that each unit is self-organized. Even within the self, there is this self-organization. You will find that each time you have a feeling that is not naturally acceptable to you, you feel unhappy. You can't change that. That's how it is. So you can say, yes, yes, I am. I will be happy. I can ignore the other person, all of that. But this is there, that as long as my feeling is not in line with the natural acceptance, there is bound to be unhappiness. I cannot change that. That is the part of my own self-organization. Then you also see that the units are energized. Being in this coexistence, these units are energized. So they have some energy. And you'll find that all the units are that way. We can start from the self and we see that we have the capacity to think. We keep feeling something, we keep thinking something. All that is going on within us. But we are not, you know, we never seem to get tired of thinking. In the sense, if the body, suppose the body is sick, so we give rest to the body. But we are not able to give rest to this part. The thinking continues. Only problem is we get tired when our thoughts are in conflict. When our thoughts are not in line with the, and our feeling is not in line with the natural acceptance. But otherwise, there is no tiredness. We always seem to have the energy to keep thinking something or the other. Isn't it? Similarly, you will see that everything in this existence, every unit in this existence, seems to have some energy. Where it's coming from? we may not be able to pinpoint. Like we begin with saying, no, no, everything on this earth, we get the energy from the sun and so on. But then where is the sun getting its energy from? And so when you keep asking these questions, then finally you have to come up with, ultimately we don't know. Because it is already energized. That's how it is. In this existence, being in this form where the units are submerged in space, this is how it is. That the units have this activity, they are self-organized, they are self-energized, and they recognize the relationship and fulfill the relationship with each other. This is how it is. Of course, if you look at the space, the space is unlimited. There is no boundary. It is all pervading. And the other important big difference between the units and the space is space is no activity. Units being submerged in space have activity, but space is no activity. Now, if you look at the units, the units are of two types, the material units and the consciousness units. So we already discussed this, this partly. The material units are temporary and they have recognizing and fulfilling as the response. And that is definite. When it comes to the consciousness units, the consciousness unit has not only recognizing and fulfilling, but this recognition and fulfillment is on the basis of assuming or accepting. This assuming or accepting can be on the basis of understanding or without understanding. Until it is without understanding, it is some assumption, something we have accepted without knowing, 
then our recognition and fulfillment may keep changing because the assumptions, there is possibility of them going on changing. So as the assumptions change, the recognition and fulfillment also changes. So now when we look at these units, if we look at the material units, for ease of study, I mean, we said we had classified nature into physical order, bio order, animal order, and human order. So let's look at this. So if you look at the material units, you start with the physical order. This, there are atoms, and the atoms form molecules. Then those molecules form you know, molecular structures, lump, fluid, and so on. From this physical order, there is the formation of the bio order. And you will find that in this physical order, everything keeps breaking down and reforming, breaking down and forming. So it is all cyclic. Things are forming, things are breaking down. And this is happening all the time. From the material or from the physical order, there is formation of the bio order. So there is formation of the cell. From the cell, there is more and more, um, what you call, complexity starts happening with these cells coming together. And you see that there is the plants, the trees, and so on. This particular, um, such cells, ultimately they are also forming the animal body and also the human body. And here also you can see the cyclicity. Things are forming, things are deforming. Plants, trees, they grow, they decay, they die, go back to the soil. Cyclic. Animal body also, same thing. Human body also, same thing. So this is about the material units. When it comes to the consciousness unit, the self, and when the self associates with an animal body, we say it is from the animal order. When the self associates with the human body, we call it human order. Right, And we will see that, you know, in the animal order, this um, recognition and fulfillment is on the basis of assuming. In the animal order, there is no capacity for, no potential for knowing. That potential is there only in the human being. So in the animal order, the basis for the recognition and fulfillment is assuming. But in the human order, we may begin with recognition and fulfillment being on the basis of assuming, but the potential for knowing, the potential for unfolding the higher activities is there. And that's where we have to reach. So we will reflect on this for today. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Shamla Didi, for the enriching session and all the participants who actively and interactively participate in the session.